All right, hey everybody, welcome to uh, what it's going to be a quick review, sort of, of uh, AT&T's fiber service. Uh, I guess with Uverse, I don't really know for sure if it's what it is, but I mean, that's what I got, I guess. So, um, I just got the service, uh, I'd say about, um, when was it? It was the 22nd Wednesday. So it's only been about, <laughs> about three days, um, but... Uh, so I mean I guess there's there's a chance that they could screw it up from you know here until then but <laughs> just as a as a quick thing I wanted to go over a couple couple things about it so the world's gonna talk about how do you make it so that you don't have to use their router because their router um, maybe not the best and uh, there's kind of a limit I think a built-in limit to how many things you can actually have plugged into it wirelessly and I'm not a big fan of that plus I like to have my own router that does whatever I want it to do so without further ado. Let's get the speed test results. So it's going to use speed test on that because that's a fairly popular common one that people use. And I'm not streaming because, you know, that would kind of mess up my uh, my bandwidth. But as you can see, we're jumping up pretty fast. So they advertise, uh, you know, about 1,000 up and down. Um, as you can see here, I'm getting about 850... Yeah, around 840, 150, somewhere like that. Uh, I have gotten more, depending on the time of the day. Right now, I've got, you know, uh, well, A, I'm streaming, B, downloading and uploading a couple things. Plus, I've got, you know, people on the house that are watching stuff, you know, on Netflix and junk. So, uh, this is actually pretty good, especially the upload speed. That upload speed right there is fucking crazy. <laughs> so... Just as a reference point, I used to be paying about $150, $160 uh, for Xfinity um, and getting something like, uh, I was getting about 100 and, I was getting like 140 150 download and about 26 megabytes upload. Um, so not that's not bad at all by any means because, you know, I'm used to, I'm, I'm a child of the, the dial-up age of, uh, <clears throat> you know, days when you had to like have dumb shit like you know 56 kilobytes and that's that's it that's all you had um and of course my speed's going down a bit now for some whatever reason but i guess it does fluctuate and depending on the time of day whatever it may go up or down now we're down to 600 so yeah i guess that goes that figures into the review right now <laughs> I'm not trying to be biased with it. I'm, I mean, I'm happy with the speeds I'm getting, even though they tell you it's supposed to be a thousand, uh, it's supposed to be gigabit basically. Uh, I'm pretty happy with a download speed of 593. Um, usually it's higher, but you're not going to download anything that fast ever anyway. Um, if there's anything I've got going on right now, but you're not really going to download stuff that fast anyway. Plus, I'm going like, I don't know, pretty far away. Why am I going so far? Anyway, I could probably pick a different server and get a better speed, but that's really not the point. Um, oh, and then we're back up to like 700 something. So it kind of fluctuates a bit, but the key thing here is I'm paying um, about 60 to $70, 60 or $70 less than I was playing, paying for Xfinity. And I'm getting about four or five times faster. So especially in the upload category, I'm getting, you know, well over uh, 20, like 30 or 40 times faster, actually. So I'm real happy with that. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, again, depending on the time of the day, depending on who's using my internet right now, which I've got probably too many people on it, <laughs> um, pretty good. And I can actually, you know, do some quality of service stuff and make this better. But I'm not going to, I'm not, I haven't tweaked it too much yet to play with it. Um, haven't done a lot of package shaping or anything, so once I get some some more effort into playing around with my router and stuff, I, I probably actually could get this a little bit better. Um, but with that out of the way, we'll do like an actual real world test. So I'm just going to download uh, Bioshock 2 uh, through Steam, and we'll see what kind of uh, speeds we're getting. <clears throat> and uh, keep in mind, I've got so this is actually going to be downloading the, uh, this isn't onto an SSD, this is onto a um, pair of uh, 7600 RPM uh, 
hard drives that are in RAID 0. So that's pretty fast already as it is. Like that's, that's definitely comparable to a lot of SSDs. They just get a lot more speed. The only difference is there's only like the big problem with this is there's no there's zero redundancy, but you just can't get like a six gigabyte SSD yet. <laughs> and uh, the speed I'm getting, you know, in RAID zero is, is good. So at any rate, so you can see we're getting something like 40 megabytes a second download speed. Um, so Steam actually is going to limit how fast you can download stuff based on a percentage of your overall connection. So you're not going to expect to get your full download speed. Even when I had the 120 megabytes download speed, I wasn't getting um, anything all that crazy. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, throw all downloads off screen. Anyway, I'm going to turn that off, see what happens. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, even and, and really any site you download stuff from, you're not going to get your full advertised speed from like a speed test because that's just not the way stuff works, right? You have to figure the server's got to uh, process your request, you got to download it through other various, uh, go through various switches and routers to get stuff. So, you know, really, the speed that I'm getting right now is pretty awesome. Especially considering I never really got above four megabytes a second with my previous internet, which again, like I said, was 120 megs uh, download. So yeah, pretty pretty good. Not uh, not mad at this at all. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stop because I don't really want this game again right now. And great. All right. So now, if you're wondering how the installs go, I'll briefly talk about that. So uh, if you're interested in getting a service and you, or any fiber service, uh, what you can kind of expect, um, so what they're going to put is there's a box basically that plugs into uh, pretty much, your, it's going to plug into an outlet, it needs power, because basically what it is is a, a fiber to copper converter box. Um, I think they called it an OPM or something, or ONP, I think that's what they said. And I don't know what that stands for. I don't particularly care. It's a fiber to copper converter. That's really all it is. Um, I've seen like a million of them. It's just, and you, uh, you, you can basically pick these things up anywhere. Um, but basically, you just go from a pair of fiber cables to a, a uh, just a regular copper. Um, and then from there, that gets plugged into the router that they provide. And you have to use the one that they provide you. You can't use your own unless you do a lot of tweaking and they will not uh, support you with that at all <laughs> they will basically just say all right good luck have fun with that <laughs> um and that's you know i guess that's fine because they don't want you to have extra stuff because really um if you have anything between you and the router you may be inducing extra um extra stress down the line as far as where you're going from point a to point b because you got to go through a second router um, I prefer having two routers, honestly, because it gives me extra security. And like I said, uh, the other router I have is significantly better. It's a much faster processor, so it can handle the all the requests a lot better. It has a lot more throughput. Um, not that their router is bad. It's actually not bad at all. It's it's pretty decent. Um, I'm not going to go through all the settings with you. I got it pulled up on the other tab here. But before I do that, I just want to talk about it a little bit. Um, but basically what they'll do is they'll take a – they've got the boxes out in front of your house, basically. Uh, usually they put something in on the ground and they have like a whole series of fibers. They'll pull one of those sets of fibers, one of those pairs. Uh, they'll, you know, bring it through your yard, bury it. And then um, pretty much they'll just uh, wire that, run that into your house through a wall. Either they'll put it through a wall. They might, depending on you know, the architecture of your house, they may, you know, put it through a wall, bring it up, fish it up through into the ceiling and go to the attic and bring it down or something like that. Um, in my case, uh, it went to a second story, so it basically went up directly through the wall, and then uh, as it went, and then basically they pushed it right through the wall, and then plugged it into, it made a little, uh, basically a a wall plate for it, and then um, yeah, the box they have attached to it is where it plugs into, and that's really it. There's nothing too too fancy with it. Um, it's really, really pretty simple. 
in all reality. Nothing crazy, no no crazy install that they have to do. And then um, once they do that part, they give you the router, they put they plug in, you know, the router to the WAN port or plug in the fiber, the copper, they plug that into the WAN port, and then they go from that to your computer and or your wireless devices, however you want to do it. Um, so pretty pretty basic stuff, pretty easy. Now, if you want to plug in your own router, the only things you got to remember is that they use a default, which is one of the things I don't like, is they force you to use a um, an IP range. That's one. It's the it's normal class Charlie IP address. So 192.168.0 is basically your or dot one. That's is actually what your your routing your clients are all going to be on. Uh, they did put the router on 254 by one. So that's, uh, I guess that's a little, a little added security, not a whole lot, but 192.168.1 is, you know, a very, very common port for routers. I prefer to change my, my, uh, my subnet to a different address. So what you'll have to do is if you're going to use a separate router, you're going to have to get comfortable with using a different subnet. So change yours to, you know, for example, 192.168.1.9 uh, or Five three or any any number you want it really doesn't matter, um, but you can't use that one nine two one six eight that one because if you do that it'll actually interfere with their router. So you have to have it set up that way. The other thing you have to do in order to make sure that it works without any issues is you have to come into your router and uh, yeah you'll log in just like you would normally log in your router except you know one nine two one six eight one dot two five four is what their routers are typically at. Um, you're going to go ahead and find the device that's plugged in to your to the router that you're on, and you know depending on how many things you have hard plugged in, you know via an actual wire, um, you're going to get different options here, uh, and you can basically just pick that, and then you're going to change it to you can click that, All right? And then what you're going to want to do is allow applications DMZ plus mode. So basically, what that does is puts it in DMZ. It opens up all the ports on that particular router to, or opens up all the ports to that router. So that's basically like it being um, on the outside, but not in a way. I mean, it's still behind another router. So there's still an added layer of security, um, but there's not as much because the firewall doesn't actually exist. I mean, it exists, but it's not really there. Um, there are a few security features built into the AT&T's block router, like uh, they have some. Um, stuff where it filters out DDoS type attacks, filters out spoofing, or not really spoofing, but it filters out a lot of bogus requests. It, it does a few things. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, Look at Theory does have some security built in, which is nice. Um, but like I said, I have like a $240 Asus router that is a lot, a lot cleaner and better. I like the UI more, I like the firmware better. So I'm happy with that, and I would like, and I like to keep that. Plus, it was nicer because all I really had to do when I got the new system was take the one of the outs for this new router and plug it straight into the WAN port of my my uh, preferred router and everything was good everything worked so as long as you're on a different subnet and as long as you are on as long as you have it as part of the DMZ um, you're going to be fine with it and you can use whatever new router of your own that you want um, and that's pretty much it if you guys have any other questions about AT&T's uh, fiber service uh, you know let me know give me a put it in the comments uh, no, whatever. <laughs> but uh, like and subscribe if you can. All that kind of stuff helps out. Uh, really appreciate all the subscribers I've got. I get, I'm up to like 700 or something. 700 or something. There's a good number. Um, close to a thousand. I'm trying to get to a thousand sometime in the next couple of years. <laughs> but uh, due to my job, I don't really have time to make videos every single day. Maybe someday I'll be one of those fancy guys that spends all their time making videos and then complains about how everybody's trying to screw them over and their life is really hard. Because, you know, when you make videos YouTube on YouTube for a living, your life is really freaking hard. Oh, man. Anyway, but again, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I will see you next time.